So Matt Jaskell here. We are in uh, Thunder Hill, California, or Willows, California. A lot of people don't know where that is, about an one hour north of Sacramento. And we're actually at what is still considered the longest sports car race, even in the world. Most uh, endurance sports car racing, some of the most famous you might have heard of, the Daytona 24 hours or the 24 hour Le Mans. This is the 25 hours of Thunder Hill. And pretty cool, what started out as like a grassroots, almost amateur level race has now grown into um, the race that everybody wants to win. Even some of the biggest teams in sports cars come here to race. Um, some to get ready for the other big races like Daytona 24 hours or some of the 12 hour races in America. And also just because it's become an adventure. It, it is a truly difficult race. Uh, all kinds of conditions, it gets very cold. This time of year we're sitting here in the middle of December or early December. It'll be 30 degrees in the middle of the night. I've done this race ever since 2004 on and off. I think this will be my 10th or even 11th time doing this race. So we're in, uh, in the uh, Precision Driving Tech uh, GT4 M4 BMW, which is a, a truly amazing, beautiful, proper, very nice race car. And uh, it's been really good, but we've, we've had normal racing issues. There is so much preparation that goes into this race to having success and finishing. And there's so many little glitches that happen along the way, like radio communications or telemetry. There's rain tire shortages, and it looks like it's gonna be raining the entire race possibly. So trying to do uh, strategy and tire management, uh, fueling, there's different types of quick fueling systems like you might see in NASCAR that really are critical to trying to win this race. If you don't have it, it could mean the difference of winning or losing the race. And we're doing it for the first time with this race car. So a lot of, a lot of trials going on and, and we're getting ready to qualify. The race starts tomorrow morning. So, so no real problems, but just a lot of, of, lot of hard work and a lot of troubleshooting to try to make this race a success. Uh, 2.30, test day, we qualify at 5.45. Car's still up on jacks, getting the brakes redone. Um, you know, we've been trying to kind of save wear and tear on the car, but there's just certain stuff that still needs to happen on track. The car's not been ready, it's still gotta go to tech. So I'm just uh, a little bit antsy right now that we're a couple steps behind. We still haven't done any driver change practice. We've still never topped the car off with gas. We have a brand new fuel rig that we borrowed from the team that I drive full time for. TRG was awesome to loan that to us, uh, but we're just kind of a little bit in no man's land right now. But um, I'm confident we're going to put Jaskel in the car, I think, for qualifying. A ton of rain experience, a ton of time on this track. He's not been in the car yet today, but we're going to put him in, have him go uh, try to get us. You know, I think the goal is to be in the front four, front four rows, and we know he can do that. So as long as these guys get the car together, it passes tech. John gets some brakes built in on the car. We're good to go. That's all we really need.
condition, like almost downpour. It's so interesting and complex out there. So qualifying starts and it's a 45 minute um, qualifying session or only 30 minutes. And like I said earlier, what's interesting with the Toyo GT4 Challenge, we have to run Toyo tires, which are great, great tire, but we are limited to one set of rain tires for the whole weekend, um, which kind of makes it interesting, obviously for tire management and, st and strategy. So it could rain all race long. And technically um, a Toyo rain tire will only last maybe half the race. We have an intermediate rain tire, um, and then obviously our slick normal racing tires. So yeah, I mean, I haven't been in the car much, so I'm pretty happy with what we did. We were inside the top 10. We were eighth overall out of, you know, probably 40 plus cars that are here. Um, we were fifth for a long time, and I only did four laps, which is really good. It takes a long time for the tires to get temperature in them, to get hot in rain conditions. Um, and I was still, you know, learning the track. You have to figure out where the grip is on the track, where the water isn't. And, um, and so we were able to be top five for a while. Pulled it in after only four laps because we just thought, let's save the tires. We had a good run. And unfortunately, uh, another car in our class got us right at the end. They did 11 laps. So that means they, they wore their tires out a little bit more um, and the track conditions are, tra are changing so much. So they, they got us at the end. So we're still eighth, which is great again, like I said, to be that far up in the field for the start of the race, which it looks like it'll start in the rain. And, um, and we're close to our, our, our biggest competitor, which is Flying Lizard. And um, yeah, so all in all, not bad. Could have been a lot worse, obviously. And for only doing four laps, I think we did pretty good. Saturday morning here at Thunder Hill. The crew and everybody has been up and at it already since seven this morning, which is gonna make a, a very long next day and a half. Last night there was probably 25, 30 mile an hour winds, tents and stuff blowing everywhere. But um, you know, we got a good night's sleep. I think we're all feeling pretty good. This is the furthest up the grid that um, either Matt or I have ever started this race. I think we ended up eighth overall. Um, pouring rain and qualifying, Matt did an awesome job. And uh, right now it's, you know, it's been windy enough that it's kind of dry out, but the rain's supposed to come. So we're expecting a pretty gnarly start. In a way it's easier for us drivers. We get the uh, comfort and coziness of a car with the windshield and roof over our head. It's the crew that's probably gonna be really tested um, again over the next 36 hours really, because the work starts now, the race starts at 11, ends at noon on Sunday, and they're gonna be in the elements out here in the wet and the cold. Hopefully we keep things clean. We don't give them much stuff to fix, just fuel, tires, and driver swap. That's our goal. No mistakes, stay on the track, not behind the wall. That's gonna be our key to success and let this race come to us, so. race time we're doing uh, things that drivers do to distract themselves for the race I think we're, we're racing we're texting we're Facebook living we're we're racing well you are okay. I'm gonna I'm, I'm like 12 hours away man <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> you car hogs <laughs> um, no but we're here in uh, rainy yet yeah, beautiful Willis California it's moist 25 hours of Thunder Hill like Matt was saying earlier I think uh, approximately 20 attempts between the two of us yeah at this race yep and uh, Matt did an awesome job in the most torrential rain last night that I've seen in quite a while. In all fairness, the car is super easy to drive to. I mean, it's an awesome M4, lots of technology. It's got traction control, stability control, ABS. So I almost feel like I'm cheating out there, but because uh, compared to the cars we've, oh, geez, yeah. we've driven cars that are manual shift, lots of power, no traction control, smaller tires. This car, even though it was very, very wet, lots of pouring rain, hard visibility, car was loose, but the, the car, the, the car uh, handling was unreal. Yeah, that's a good car. We're thankful that you know Marco Redizic, fellow competitor from SRO America, 
Um, hauled it over here from Florida. Dave Powell, really long time friend. Um, Hype 10. And uh, Hype 10, aspiring driver. He's been putting in a lot of effort and a lot of time. He's getting really, really crafty behind the wheels. So I think we have a really, really solid team. And uh, I mean, we were top five overall yeah. in one of the hardest sports car races in America in qualifying. So we know, and that was in the rain, but we know the car is capable of running inside the top 10 out of 50 cars and we can win our class. We're up against Flying Lizard Motorsports, which is probably one of the number one sports car teams in America. Uh, Patrick Long, famous sports car driver for Porsche, was known to race for them for many years. They have, I think they've won everything in, yeah. in, in sports cars. Yeah. So we're up against them, uh, which is, is uh, respectable to say the least. Yeah, it's definitely the furthest up the field that either of us have been for this race, so feeling pretty confident. I think it's really our, our race to manage, and you know the whole goal is to keep this M4 on the track. Nothing but driver changes, fuel changes, and tire changes, and never be behind the wall. Oh, here and comes you, you, the rain you again. Can't, <laughs> you can't hear it in the camera there probably, but it's starting to rain pretty hard, which is literally right on time. Uh, it's 10 a.m., uh, it's five minutes to 10, we need to be on the grid in about 30 minutes, and the weatherman said optimistically it would be 99% chance of rain at 11 a.m., which is the official start of the race. I'm sorry you had to hear me sing, but it, it, it went with the ticket. Here comes the rain. Okay, now he goes. You know, right, you know that old song. Should we go make sure they got the right tires getting ready to go in the car? We should make sure they set the car ready to go. Uh -huh. Do okay. some radio checks and everything. We're out of here. See ya. hours into the race, I think two hours and 30 minutes or so, and uh, Matt uh, Jaskell just came in a few minutes ago to do a pit stop. Uh, we obviously needed to refuel, and we went from full wets to intermediates. He's back out doing some really good lap times. Hopefully um, we could um, uh, cut the gap between the Audi that's in front of us and the BMW now that our pit stop was a little slower, but we're going to get better at it. And that's about it. 10% uh, of the race time has elapsed and we're looking forward to the other 90.
experience. Uh, I left, and uh, as I was leaving the pits, uh, I had no power. It was like it was like it was stuck in the pit speed limiter. I pull out of uh, out of the pits, and I'm like, all right, on it, and no acceleration. And so I had got around to a safe spot, which was halfway around the track, but I knew there was a pull-off area that I could get way out of the, the flow of traffic. So I exited out, got to that space, reset the car. Uh, when I came back up, a bright red uh, dash alarm came on, blinding me. And I'm driving blinded and uh, couldn't get the, the dash to reset. So no matter how many times I held the buttons to do it, wouldn't do it. Then um, I was like, well, you know what? I mean, I don't need a I don't need to have uh, a dash to race. <laughs> I need a car. So I started getting on it, started going, and then immediately felt um, the car was very loose in the rear end. I could feel it like rocking back and forth. It seemed like, I know we were thinking maybe we had some suspension issues earlier, we may still, but um, as I was chasing that down, I'm thinking like kind of feeling it, what's it doing? When I, when I get on it, what's it doing? When I'm braking, what's it doing? And it felt like something's coming loose. And also in, uh, in the corners, I had no uh, predictability as far as when the power would kick in, when it would come out, it's getting real loose. And lo and behold, so we come in, I say, guys, I'm smelling it. It smells like, it smells like the inside of a dentist's office when a, when a part lets go like that. It's kind of funny, but uh, it's that drill, that, that smell of like metal and grease and whatever. But uh, as that let go, uh, it was very obvious. Like this car has got a problem. Unfortunately, that was a quarter of a mile after pit entry. So I had to make another lap around, right hand signal on, just like hugging the shoulder. Sorry guys, everybody's passing me by. I just did my best to stay out of the way, try not to be a hazard and get off the track. So here we are and now we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm um, trying to put on my happy face. Um, the ups and downs of racing and certainly are extra up and down in endurance racing sometimes. We were uh, leading our class, I think top five overall, and now we're behind the wall, which was just the one thing that we said couldn't happen. Um, it seems like the rear differential came loose and ate the axles, and just the further and further we go into this, it just there's all these indicators that we're just ill-prepared, and that's what happens in endurance racing. Um, I don't know if we have the parts to get it back on track. I haven't been in the car yet. I might not even get in the car. But I'm um, trying not to go there. I've never not finished this race. I might go out and start jogging if I need to. Run for 18 hours, I think, if I go slow. <laughs> so. Um, so at this point, I'm just gonna, I guess, try to pitch in and see if we can get the car on track. See if we can go get some parts from somewhere. Maybe the parts that are here work once they get the diff put back in. Um, if it's going to take a long time, I might go take a little snooze or have some dinner so when I get in the car, I'm fresh and I can go for a nice four-hour stint. And uh, if not, we'll start packing stuff up, heading home, and thinking about the next one. Somebody answering at least. Yeah, he's fairly close. Who's that? Uh, one of the crew guys at camera. So if there's a crew guy there that could drive it, that'd be even easier because they could just go to the shop and get it and come. If I gotta call somebody at TRG, I could do that. I don't think we can start in an M4 and finish in a Cayman. I don't think that's legal. <laughs> That was a good eye roll. 
Are you going to get parts? I'll have Uber bring them. For real? How long will that take? Three hours. How can you even place in a race when you're out for like four hours? It's a long fing race. Bad shit can happen. Waiting for the Uber to bring the parts. <laughs> well. The other cars are racing. We're not. We don't have the parts. These guys are busting their asses. And. I've seen this before, though. We've recovered from this before. We have. We have. So, what are the odds of recovery? We've had better odds of recovery before. And why is that? Because we had the spare parts or had direct access to them. At this point, the best option is parts that are somewhere that we can't quite get a hold of everybody, but we know people that work for there that know that the parts are there and they're three hours away. Yeah, but it's not even open. Right. And it's three hours away by Uber. Huh? Right. But it's racing and we do a lot of stupid stuff. I mean, it's even just being here is stupid. Point, that backfire, yeah. It's like the perfect yeah. timing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel obligated for something to happen to make Matt's heroic four-hour start of the race worthwhile. Otherwise, it's, that was a total waste of a lot of risk. Why are you worried about him? You haven't even gotten in the car yet. Well, that's for all of us. It's for the team. Like, he went and did that, and then now none of us can back it up and go do our deal. I understand team. I think he did a great job, but... Yeah, oh, yeah. I would love to race. I just want to, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Um, yeah. progress. I pointed the guys into the direction to get a new diff and some new axles here in the case that we want to just go drive around Where? from Cameron Racing in Sonoma. Like send somebody to go pick up shit? We'd pay somebody from there to bring them up so it's three hours instead of six. Who's going to go do that in the middle of the night? It's, it's only six. Here? No, they're, no, no. They're not racing? Uh -uh. They're smarter than us. But I'm saying, who's going to... I mean, it's the middle of the night. It's 6 o'clock in the evening on Saturday. Yeah. We get Uber. Huh? Uber. But I'm saying somebody's going to go to the shop. Like, someone from Camera Racing? Gonna... Somebody that works there, maybe. Or or we might just be sending it with what we have and see if we can get a car back together that we can go finish in, at least. Right. Um. It's uh, end of the night, the rain has come back out. This has turned into about a three hour ordeal, maybe a little bit less because these guys are just absolutely busting their tail. We've had to run to go get parts, but um, we're getting ready to put the car back on track. And one thing about endurance racing is that you're never out of the game. Just as we were starting to kind of go, man, what's the point of going out? Maybe we should just find a way to finish. You know, our main competition, the Flying Lizards, have some, some heavy contact and they're now behind the wall. So. I think we're about 80 laps down or something like that, but um, we're gonna uh, get drivers in the car. I'm gonna go get rested because I'm gonna probably be called on for about a four hour stint here in a little bit and uh, see what happens. <laughs> The car is almost ready to go out again. I think I'm gonna pop in the car to make sure that everything is feeling good. Uh, I think the guys did a great job uh, putting the car back together with the parts that we had. Uh, we've been out, I think, for four hours and change. Um, so we will see. Uh, we just found out also that the Audi uh, that we're competing against in, in GT Toyo class 
uh, is out of the race, uh, had some impact with another car and into the wall. Uh, we never want to see anything negative uh, happen to a competitor, but it motivates us now a little bit more to go out and uh, try to uh, go after the other BMW. It's 1 a.m. I just woke up from a little nap. I have not been in the car yet. Um, I think I've driven like seven laps this weekend between practice and testing and whatnot. So uh, Dave's out there right now. I, I think we're second in class and just continuing to chip away. Um, I guess there was some exhaust work that also had to be done. So these guys have just been getting tested one thing after another. Um, getting a little bit of coffee, just trying to get Woken up and ready to go. I just went on a little bike ride down the paddock and preparing for probably a double stint. It's wet out, so that could be in excess of four hours with the, the good fuel economy we're getting in this thing. So that's kind of the plan. I have no idea what to expect pace-wise because I, you know, again, like I said, I haven't been out. I, um, I don't even know what tires we're on. It's been kind of a mixed match as far as that goes, but. Uh, the important thing is the car's back out there and we're turning laps. That's all we need to do. We need to just keep getting past that uh, Flying Lizard car that retired and just see what, uh, what cards the racing gods deal for us and the other BMW and we'll be ready to accept that hand, whatever it is.
got Nate here with me. So we had a four hour pit in the middle of the night, as you already know. Um, I, I've been asleep sometimes, so I'm not sure what we've talked about yet, but uh, Dave, uh, Derek went out in the car. Dave actually went out around midnight or so. That's about the time I fell asleep. And then I woke up at 5 a.m. just on the couch and thought maybe it's time to get up. I went out, Derek was still rolling, doing all right. Um, so I got my gear on and literally within 10 minutes, Derek pulled in. I went out and did about a two hour stint, I think, roughly with the yellows and everything, like a full a full load of fuel almost. Um, it was, it's like the Baja 1000 out there, if you've ever seen what that is like. There's literally, there's just mud everywhere on the windshield. There's, it's, I've never seen anything like it. But what, when you were out there at one, what was it like? Uh, in the morning. Yeah, it was wet still, right? Wet, slick, misty, uh, and there's a, there's a, they're laying down bricks out of play on the track. This will be a brickyard the new track. Br the, new brick, the new brickyard. But they're, they're, they're a combination of grease, ice, and clay, apparently. Oh, and super glue because they do not go away. This it's is awesome. This is what makes this race a little yeah. different, all right? So, like, in a top level professional, like, Red Am, NASCAR, you know, any any big names you've heard of of, of sanctioning bodies, they would they would probably shut down. And that's actually what makes this race kind of cool and unique. They let the race go. That's why it was called Survive the 25. There is literally chunks of mud and clay in the racing line. We're not going to stop the race to clean it, deal with it. Um, so, I mean, and that's what makes this race kind of hardcore. So. distance of uh, saying that we're to the tail end of another 25 hour of Thunder Hill. We got about an hour and a half left. I just got out of the car, did another hour and a half or two hours. We're very comfortably in our second place position in class. I don't know where we've ended up overall with all the, all the drama, but um, gosh, it was just a, it's been a trying race and I like to think I'm pretty adaptable and uh, in a race car and just always love being there. But there were honestly moments where I was like, I don't want to be out here. I don't want to be in this car. And then moments of like, okay, that was an awesome lap. That was a fun battle. So it's just, uh, I just think this, the, the conditions, the tire situation, the kind of trying to baby the car a little bit, it just really tried us as drivers to stay inside the box, not flex our egos and just go do what we need to do to keep the car in one piece, finish the race, go claim that second place step. and. Uh, it's been awesome. The crews, you know, they're already starting to tear down. There's nothing left to do if everything goes well out there. So I think that we'll uh, chalk it up as a successful mission.
video. Did you get your thing taken care of your media? The media pass thing? Shit, I didn't do that. What should I tag in a Facebook post?